Hello there, and welcome to a not an un, it's completely unscripted. Um, I'm going to talk about the, uh, and I haven't even read it in its entirety. I just heard about some changes and this announcement of a Pathfinder Second Edition remastered. So, um, we're gonna find out today what that means. So give me a moment here as I pull up Paizo, Paizo blog. Let's see what we got here, Paizo.com community blog. Strange, it seems like the, uh, and I'll go ahead and just show what I'm, And we'll do that. Ha ha! So let's move my huge ass to the other side. Make me make me a little smaller here. Ooh, the magic of green screen. Okay, so I've clicked on Paizo.com. Not sure why it's not coming up. I'm gonna go ahead and pull up a command prompt and try and ping Paizo.com. See, Paizo.com. <gasps> Can't even ping Paizo.com. Request timed out. If you don't believe me, I'll go ahead and show you. Window capture, CMD. So, not even kidding with you. Look at that. Boom. I'll do it again. So, we are ping. www. Oh, whoops. So, here we go. Ping www.paizo.com. Pinging paizo.com. There's their, at least their ping server. Can't even get to Paizo. They must not want me to tell the truth. That's all right. We'll go to Reddit where I found out about this in the first place. Oh, uh, oh there's their little thing right there. Um, let's go ahead and search for remaster. Um, communities, uh, whoops, let's go to Pathfinder 2E, aha, weekly questions, mega thread, here we go, beginner box 2, a project announced, hopefully this will pull it up, hopefully, if not, like I said, uh, we'll know, yeah, it, yeah, those Python servers are getting slammed right now. Okay, either way, if you didn't know, Pathfinder 2nd Edition has announced that they're doing a 2nd Edition remaster. Now, the tidbit I want to highlight here is what was put in the first comment here. Um, or the first and second comment, I should say. Interesting tidbit. This trend, oh, and this will be coming March. Uh, March for the player core i think they're calling it player core and july for the gm core so interesting tidbit this transition will result in a few minor modifications to the pathfinder second edition system notably the removal of alignment and a small number of nostalgic creatures spells and magic items exclusive to the ogl these elements remain a part of the corpus of pathfinder second edition rules for those who still want them and are fully compatible with the new remastered rules but will not appear in future pathfinder releases so the reason why this is coming down the ladder is uh, in case you literally live under a rock in terms of the um, tabletop world. There was a big debacle with the Wizards of the Coast open gaming license and uh, the threat to tabletop role-playing games as a whole, but specifically Pathfinder, because Pathfinder, as we all know, is very similar, uh, at least in, 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 in its core um, audience, uh, as Dungeons & Dragons. So, um, that being said, 
Uh, actually, well, let's go ahead and uh, I'll, uh, before I get to that, let's read the second one. So yes, uh, this is uh, this is largely what this is about, officially removing anything that ties them to the OGL. I'm actually one of the people who enjoy the alignment system in the game, but I'm apparently the minority here. The removal is fine. The others have stated the mechanics tied to it so much, such as champion subclasses, that I hope will regain that will remain just as interesting, even though the path player core will include everything in the APG. Maybe we'll get some revamping of the classes here, blah, blah, blah. So here's my take on uh, removing alignment. Huge L. And I think the reason, so like how I put this, I think what Wizards of the Coast, I don't think Paizo wanted to get rid of alignment uh, at all. And it's a huge L for the game because I think it's core to the experience of Pathfinder 2nd Edition. Um, I know some people, alignment sucks, alignment damn it sucks. Uh, hot take, you suck. I love you, please subscribe. But alignment is core to Pathfinder and its world. Um, so again, I, again, you don't have to agree with me. It's fine. We can all have our opinions. You can run the games. You run your games the way you want to run them. I'll run them the way I want to run them. We can agree to disagree. So um, unlike Dungeons and Dragons, um, the uh, alignment is, again, a fundamental part of the system. You cannot convince me, um, and you know, call and, and I'm not, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not how I put this. I'm open to debate about it, but if you've run anything that's canon to Pathfinder, such as an adventure path or a module or even a one shot, the deities are involved in this world, unlike Dungeons and Dragons. Not saying that they don't have their canon deities and such. They do. But they were never truly core to the experience of the game. You cannot run through an adventure path, any single adventure path, and not run into the deities of Pathfinder. Because if they, again, if that was the case, you could make the argument that um, that the Pathfinder game doesn't emphasize spirituality and the deities. It 100% does in terms of anything canon to Pathfinder. Now, again, I've had my videos about running, you know, third party or homebrew for Pathfinder, and I think that's an L, personally. I think you're... I think you're robbing yourself of an, a wonderful experience. There's so much good lore in terms of Pathfinder. Yes, there's a lot. Guess what? We're all learning it. No one has, no one's memorized all of the lore. I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's damn near. The joy comes to both the player and the game master who has to learn new things all the time because their players throw them a, a monkey wrench with a deity or you know, or, or, or something that they have to learn about. That's half the fun. At least I would make that argument. So um, to remove alignment is, that's a huge loss to the experience that is Pathfinder. Now, again, you know, we can, you can run your table however you want, and you better believe that I'm definitely going to be keeping alignment at my table. And the me reason... I'm making this video is because, I, you know, like I said, along with the announcement that remastered, I, someone told me that there was going to be alignment changes and the alignment was going to be removed. When I heard that, I was like, that's horrible. That's horrible. I, I can't imagine running any canon Pathfinder uh, adventures without alignment. That to me is crazy. Like, that's absolutely crazy. It's what makes a champion a champion. What's the it's, you know, it's what it, it, it defines the champion class. You know, this isn't 5e or, or Dungeons and Dragons where, you know, alignment 
is a, you know, a dump activity or something that's just like, ah, I'm alignment because whatever. Alignments have real meaning in Pathfinder. They dictate, they even dictate what kind of spells you can cast. Because again, and, and a lot of people get hung up on the idea of this, it being this like, oh, it restricts my character and what they can do. It, no, it doesn't. It gives your character meaning and more life that your game master knows how to, so that your game master knows how your, how your character should generally respond when they are going to come up to some new content that the game master is going to put before you, even if you aren't running canon content. If I understand the general alignment of the players in my group, I have a general understanding of how their characters should react to the situations I present them. And I'm not saying that, oh, we need to do that to make the GM's life easier. But it's like, but listen, the more tools I have to control the story and make the story more engaging, I think that's a one in everybody's book. If I can make the story more engaging, everyone's going to engage more, generally speaking. So again, there's no downside. So yes, you have backstories to go off of. You know, you can do character questionnaires like I do or whatever else. But alignment dictates a lot. And that's also to, you know, an alignment isn't fixed the entire campaign. You know, someone who's a, uh, let's say a, a necromancer, you know, a necromancer wizard, you know, alignments or someone who is, believes that doing evil, you know, is, is okay, might have a redemption arc. And on the opposing end, someone who is good may fall into an evil alignment for whatever reason. And on the, and you, again, you have the axis of law and chaos. Someone who is a, you know, diehard, everything must be done this way. Everything must be done this way. Everything must be done this way. Someone who lives their life completely structured, like some would, some would say overly structured, may be turned into a way of thinking of, maybe you need to lighten up a bit. Maybe I am a bit too wound. Maybe I do take everything too seriously and I don't, I don't give any leeway to anything. And everything is absolute, right? It gives room for characters to grow and to change. And on the, like I said, on the opposite side, maybe there's this, that one character is like, ah, for the laws, I just do it because can I love seeing the chaos unwind, right? And they learn maybe through tragedy, maybe through trauma, that, hey, maybe I need to, maybe I need to take life a bit more seriously. Maybe I am a bit too free-spirited and I need to be a bit more careful, right? And again, that doesn't mean they have to go to polar shifts, right? It doesn't have to be a polar shift, right? You know, or you can, again, you can start in the middle, you know, of law and chaos or good and evil and then find yourself uh, over here. Uh, well, maybe, you know. It, again, all it does is justify character growth. At least that's, that's my take on it. Um, and again, again, as, as a GM, it is a wonderful tool for us to ensure, or at least have a good idea, especially if you're not running something, especially if you're running homebrew or third party content where um, or like I said, you're just literally running your own thing, whether it's in Galarian or not, and you're creating this content for your players. It's a lot easier to create content, especially if it's for one character or for two characters or the party. It's easier to make content that you can have a better idea of its success rate because you understand 
what those characters where those characters literally literally align themselves and how they would deal with those situations. You know, generally speaking, if someone is, if, if the party witnesses, a, a, you know, a thief take, take an, a, an innocent bystander's purse, would someone who's lawful good behave the same way as someone who's chaotic evil? I think we could all make the argument, no, uh, they probably aren't, you know, they probably won't react the same way. And you would know that because they're alignment. Now, again, I understand the argument of, well, I don't need alignment. Our characters are just characters and they're going to do what they're going to do because they're characters. Weak sauce, bro. I'm calling it, that shit's weak sauce. The, the excuse of my character does a thing because it's just what my character would do is weak sauce or i'll just gonna say it, it's weak as fuck it's garbage the fact that you know you you choose to not hold yourself accountable for your character's actions because you don't want to stir the pot and actually hold your ground as to what your character would actually do so you just lob the excuse of oh well, i'll just you know, or, or you're not willing to actually find a creative way to solve the problem. And instead you just th toss out the fucking idea of, well, this is what my character would do. Because I don't want to have to think. Thinking hard. As you can tell, I'm a little wound up by this. And I don't apologize. This shit sucks. Like alignment is so key to this game. And when that shit's gone, because like how I put this. Anyone else that, you know, when someone else picks up a second edition book next year and they go, oh, I can't wait to try second edition. I've always, heard, I've only heard so many good things about it. You know, they're now going to be, if they're not told about this, about alignment and about certain other things that they're going to be re removed from the core system, they'll never know. So again, I ask and implore you, don't let alignment die thank you so much for paying attention and listening to my rants rant excuse me and uh, i will see you all on the next video take it easy